Hi, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll look into the most common data structures asked in lead code questions. We'll start from the most common one first. They are all important, especially if you're preparing for an interview, so I suggest you watch the whole video. If you haven't already, please check out my YouTube channel, where I have other videos that will help you prepare for your technical interviews. Let's start now. At the top of our list, we have arrays. An array is a data structure that stores a collection of elements, where each element can be accessed using an index. Elements in arrays are stored in contiguous memory locations. In Python, arrays are implemented using lists. Let's see some practical examples of operations that can be performed on lists in Python. Let's say we want to create an empty list. We can simply do the following. If instead we want to create an already initialized list, we could do it in the following way. To access a list using an index, we can simply put the index in the square brackets. Python lists have some useful methods that are gonna be handy during lead code questions, and these are the following. Append, insert, remove, pop, sort, and reverse. Let's talk about time complexity of some of the array operations. Accessing an element takes constant time, whilst searching, inserting, and deleting takes big O of n time. The time complexity of inserting and deleting elements in Python arrays depend on the location of the element being added or removed. The worst case scenario occurs when the element is at the beginning of the array, requiring the shifting of all the other elements. We could have a whole separate video for this topic, but let's stop here for now as I think this is enough information. Some lead code questions that are going to help you practice arrays are the following. Threesum to sum and search in rotated sorted array. The next data structure on our list is hash map. A hash map provides a way to store and retrieve data quickly. The most important bit of information to remember is that data here is stored as key value pairs. The key is hashed using a hash function and the resulting hash code is used to determine the location of the underlying array where the associated value can be found or stored. I can't stress enough how important hash maps are as these are encountered very frequently in technical interviews. In Python, the equivalent of a hash map is a dictionary. You can use this instruction here to create an empty dictionary. To create a prefilled dictionary instead, do something similar to this. To access a value, you can simply use the key as the index. The most useful methods provided by Python dictionaries are the following. Clear. It clears all the key value pairs from the dictionary. Get. Given a key, it returns its value. Items. Returns a view of the dictionary's key value pairs as tuples. Keys. Returns a view of the dictionary's keys. Values. It returns a view of the dictionary's values. And finally, pop. It removes the key and it returns its value. Let's look at the time complexity for hash map operations. Iteration over the hash map takes big O of n time. Insertion and retrieval instead, they take constant time. Something I want to highlight is that during an interview, we generally say that insertion and retrieval times are constant, but in reality, we might end up in some situations where this is not true. For example, when our hashing function is so bad that during collision resolution everything gets put into the same bucket, we could actually end up making retrieval run in big O of n time. Some lead code questions that require hash maps are twosum, valid anagram, and group anagrams. Binary trees are another frequently occurring data structure in lead code questions. A binary tree is a hierarchical data structure in which each node has at most two children, referred to as the left child and the right child. Each child of a node is the root of a subtree. The topmost node in a tree is called the root. You might have come across binary search trees. 
What you need to remember here is that a BST has at most two children, and for each node, all elements in its left subtree are less than the root node, and all elements in its right subtree are greater than the root node. In Python, there is no built-in binary tree data structure, but it can be easily implemented using classes. An important operation we need to mention when talking about binary trees are the various traversal methods. Traversal simply refers to the operation where we visit all the nodes of the binary tree in a specific order. The most common traversal methods are in order, where we visit the left child, the root node and then the right child, pre-order, where we first visit the root, the left child and in the end the right child, post-order, where we first visit the left child, then we move on to the right child and in the end we visit the root. Some good lead code questions that use binary search are kth smallest, in order, pre-order and post-order. I suggest you go through these questions and try to actually solve them. The next data structure I want to talk about is stack. A stack is a data structure that follows the LIFO principle, last in, first out, which means that the last element added to the stack is the first one to be removed. Python does not have a built-in stack data type, but we can easily implement one using a list. Here is an example. Let's create an empty stack first. Now, let's push elements onto our stack. If we now remove elements from our stack, we can use the pop method, which will return the last element we added. Adding and removing elements from a stack takes constant time, so this is quite good when we're trying to solve lead code questions. Some good questions that uh, you can use to practice stacks are the following, valid parentheses and mean stack. Let's now talk about heaps. A heap is a specialized tree-based data structure that satisfies the heap property. A heap can be of two types, a max heap and a mean heap. A max heap is a complete binary tree where the root node is the largest element, whilst in a mean heap the root node is the smallest element. Python provides a heap queue module in the standard library which offers a mean heap implementation using a list. We can create a mean heap in Python in the following way. We first need to create an empty list and then push elements onto the heap using the heap push method. In order to pop the smallest element, we can then use the heap pop method. There is also a very useful heapify function which given a list transforms it into a mean heap with a time complexity of big O of n log n, and this will come handy during interviews. Heaps are useful as they provide constant time access to the top element, whether it be min or max. Some lead code questions I suggest you look into which require heaps are the following. Kate largest element in a stream, and last tone weight. Let's now talk a bit about graphs. There are various ways to represent a graph data structure, and the choice of representation depends on the nature of the problem and the type of operations that need to be performed. Two common representations are adjacency matrix and adjacency list. Let's start by looking at the adjacency matrix. An adjacency matrix is a 2D array where each entry, ij, represents the presence or absence of an edge between vertices i and j. Pros of this storage approach are simple representation and efficient for dense graphs. The cons instead are that it requires more space for sparse graphs and it is inefficient for certain operations such as adding and removal of vertices. An adjacency list instead is a collection of lists where each list represents the set of neighbors of a vertex. This representation is often more space efficient than adjacency matrix for sparse graphs. Pros in this case are that it is efficient for sparse graphs, it requires less space, and it is efficient for certain operations such as addition and removal of vertices. The cons instead is that it requires more time for certain operations 
such as checking if there is an edge between two vertices. I don't want to go further down in detail as I'm sure there is plenty of great material online. Here are some lead code questions that require graph knowledge that will help you understand these better. Number of islands, max area of island, and Pacific Atlantic water flow. I have been asked questions regarding link lists many times during interviews, so these are quite popular with interviewers. A link list is a linear data structure in which elements are stored in nodes, and each node points to the next node in the sequence. The last node typically points to none, indicating the end of the list. Link lists offer dynamic memory allocation, efficient insertions and deletions, and do not have a fixed size. There are different types of link lists, but the most common ones you'll encounter are singly link lists, where each node contains data and a reference to the next node in the sequence, doubly link lists, where each node contains data, a reference to the next node, and a reference to the previous node, and finally, circular link lists. The last node in these lists point back to the first node, creating a loop. There is no built-in link list data structure in Python, but we can create one using classes. Here are the time complexity for some common operations in a singly linked list. Insertion at the beginning, it takes constant time. Adding a new node at the beginning of the linked list involves creating a new node and updating the next pointer of the new node to point to the current head. So this is a constant time operation. Insertion at the end. It takes big O of n time. Adding a new node at the end of a singly linked list requires traversing the entire list to find the last node. Deletion of a node takes big O of n time. Deleting a node from a singly linked list involves traversing the list to find the node to be deleted and updating the next pointer of the preceding node. Search is another operation that takes big O of n time and this is because the element might not be in the list or might be at the end of the list so we have to traverse through the length of the list. Some lead code questions that will help you practice this data structure are the following. Reverse link list, merge two sorted lists, a reorder list. I will make sure to add links to all these lead code questions in the description box below for you to practice. In this video, we have covered some of the most commonly asked data structures in lead code questions. I hope you found this video useful. Leave any feedback in the comment box below. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Also check out my YouTube channel, you're gonna find many more lead code questions and other videos that I hope you're gonna find useful to prepare for your technical interviews. Thank you.